Okay, so final lesson in solving uh, trig functions. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got. Now, I know it's quadratic um, because it has a squared and it also has three terms so that normally I would say we would factor, right? Because again, quadratic and three terms, we should have to factor this. But there's a problem. I can't factor something that has two different functions unless I'm factoring it by GCF, okay? If there's like only two pieces or whatever and it had two different factors or two different functions in there, you could um, technically factor by GCF, you know, if there was a way to do so. But the problem is, again, it's quadratic and there are three uh, terms. So we have to figure out a way to factor this. And we cannot factor it by GCF because, again, we have three terms. So we have to use another method. We basically have to get this to where it does not have two different functions anymore. It cannot have both sine and cosine in it unless we can somehow factor it by GCF, which we can't. Okay, so we're basically going to use one of the identities that we learned at the beginning of this unit. Um, and that one is going to be your Pythagorean identities. So just a quick reminder, um, we have three Pythagorean identities, right? We have sine squared X plus cosine squared X equals one. And we went through and we divided. If we divide everything by cosine, what we get is tangent squared X plus one equals secant squared X. And if we went through and divided the original by sine, we would get one plus cotangent squared X equals cosecant squared X, okay? Because of our reciprocals and, and all that kind of stuff and our uh, quotient identities. So we are going to use one of these basically to transform this function to where it only has one function in it, where it either only has sine or it only has cosine, okay? Now, take a look at those identities real quick. They're all squared, right? That means that the only thing that we can actually replace has to be the squared term. That's the only thing that we can get rid of, right? Because there is no way to replace sine with a cosine. There's, there's not an identity that relates sine and cosine somehow um, to where we can replace one with the other, okay? So we have to replace the squared term. So, okay, we need to replace cosine squared X. All right, so take a look at your Pythagorean identity. If I want cosine squared X by itself, um, all I'm doing is just sort of shifting the function around. I can subtract sine squared from both sides, right? And I can get cosine by itself, one minus sine squared X. And those Basically, those are two equal statements, right? If you add them together and they equal one, then you can subtract one, you know, from both sides. Um, and you can rearrange your functions this way. So you will be using and you will be rewriting these Pythagorean identities so that you can actually work with all six independently. Okay. So you're going to replace the cosine squared in that function that we're solving with one minus sine squared. All right. So let's see how that looks. I'm going to replace it. So I'm going to rewrite the problem with just the one minus sine squared because they are equivalent. We're basically using substitution. All right. Now, why did I put the two and the parentheses? Well, the only thing I'm replacing is the cosine squared, right? Just this part right here can be replaced. And the two is basically multiplying that. So that two is also going to multiply by what you replaced it with. Okay, so I, yeah, I do actually have to distribute that back out. So that's going to be two minus two sine squared X. Okay, plus sine X plus one equals zero. So this is now a quadratic problem that only has one function in it now. They're both sine functions or they're both uh, sine statements. So now I just kind of need to reorganize it so that I can go ahead and factor it. So now it is actually factorable. But, you know, obviously it needs to be written in standard form first. So I can combine the two and the one, right, and get negative two sine squared x plus sine x plus three equals zero, right? 
Um, I personally do not like dealing with a negative in front of my squared term. Uh, the good news is I don't have to. I can change all the signs in my problem. I can basically multiply the whole thing by negative one. It's the same problem. Um, I just don't have to deal with the negative in front of the squared. So if I multiply the whole thing by negative one, I get two sine squared X minus sine X minus three equals zero. It will factor the same way. It will solve the same way. I just don't want to deal with the negative. So uh, being that we've already learned how to factor these either by uh, box method or by grouping, I know that my product is negative six and my sum is negative one. And I think we did one just like this before. Um, my two numbers should be negative three and positive two as far as what multiplies to get there. So I'm just go ahead and real quick go through the factoring part of this. Equals zero. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and just do it by grouping. Like I said, if you want to do the box method, it's the same thing. All right, what do those two have in common is a sine x, and that's going to be a 2 sine x minus 3, and just a positive 1 and a 2 sine x minus 3. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we solved this exact one as an example when we first started factoring these. So go ahead and set each piece equal to zero. I already know this one's not gonna work because I'm going to end up with sine x is equal to three halves and the inverse is not going to exist. And on this one, I'm just gonna get sine x is equal to negative one. So x is the sine inverse of negative one. And we only have one answer for that. And that is either three pi over two or uh, 270 degrees. Again, the factoring part is, is automatic. We've already been doing that. This is just the new thing where we have to substitute because it does not work when you have two functions within the same statement. All right, so let's try one more. All right, so now we've got two tan squared x minus secant x plus one. So again, I can only, only, only ever replace the squared term. That's just, just the way it works. You cannot replace a non-squared term not on solving these type of problems. It just does not work that way. So what am I going to replace tangent squared x with? Well, here's my problem with tan squared x. In order to get tan x by, or tan squared x by itself, I would have to subtract one. So that means that tangent squared x is equal to secant squared x minus one. And that's what I'm going to substitute it with. I'm going to rewrite this. Secant squared x minus one minus secant x plus one equals zero. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to distribute. Um, you, you'll come to one of these problems that does not have a number in front of the squared term. That's fine. That just means you don't have to distribute. It's kind of nice. So 2 secant squared x minus 2 minus secant x plus 1. Combine your like terms so that we can get this into a form that we can actually factor. So 2 secant squared x minus secant x minus 2 plus 1 would be minus 1. And again, same thing. Product and sum. Your product is negative 2. Your sum is negative 1. So negative 2 and positive 1 work. Told you, you're never, ever really going to get large numbers with these because there's only so many numbers that will work. All right, so 2 secant x as far as what would come out of both of those. What would you multiply it by? Secant x minus 1. Nothing in common, so a plus 1. And you've got secant x minus 1 again. So we're all good. These two match. So 2 secant x plus 1 equals 0, and secant x minus 1 equals 0. Now, um, remember that these are reciprocals, right? Obviously, secant x is not on your unit circle, but it's reciprocal, which is 1 over cosine, right? Or rather, cosine is. So you can actually flip these after you solve them and keep going. So we'll make sure we remember that from our basic solving. So secant x is going to equal negative a half, which means if I go ahead and reciprocate it, 
the cosine of x is going to equal negative 2. All right, well, I know that that's no solution. There's no place on my unit circle where cosine is going to equal negative 2. Okay, so I don't even have to keep going and do the inverse on that one. Okay, so for this one, I would add 1 to both sides. And I'm going to get secant x equals 1. Go ahead and reciprocate it. Cosine x is equal to 1 as well because 1 over 1 doesn't change. All right, so that means x is going to be the cosine inverse of 1. Where on your unit circle does cosine equal 1? Um, that would be 0, right? 0 or 360. You can actually say it's either way. Or 2 pi if you want it in radians. So that does work either way. And that is it. Again, you're not doing much different from the factoring. The deal is, is that you have to get it into one function first, which means you'll be doing some substituting. And you will consistently be using your Pythagorean identities. So please make sure you have those. All right, the next upper level one, we don't have any squares at all, right? We do not, we do not have anything um, that is squared. So that means the first thing that we're actually going to have to do is square this. But here's the deal, right? We have absolutely no squares, no, no second degree. Um, we have no way of doing GCF, right? Absolutely no way of doing the GCF. Um, so we have to square it just so we can get it to a point where we can work with it. In order to be squared, uh -huh, um, you have to have one function on either side. You cannot have both functions on one side and square it. It is not going to work. So one function on either side of the equals. Which one you move is entirely up to you. Okay. So if you move the cotangent, um, then the um, you're either going to have to replace, well, it's actually not going to matter either way. If you move the cotangent, you're going to have a cosecant squared after you square it on this side. And you'll have a cotangent squared on that way. Um, either way, again, you're going to have to use your Pythagorean identities, right, to get rid of one. So it really does not matter which one you move. Um, and you're eventually going to have to get rid of a squared anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and move the cotangent over. Again, just because you cannot have them both on one side, this will not work. So this is literally going to build up to the last problem we did where you will have to substitute. Before you can substitute, you actually have to square it because there's no way to take out a GCF or convert it any other way. So this is what we call the highest level for solving trig functions. I'm going to square both sides, and I'm going to get cosecant squared. That's just it by itself. Remember that if you're squaring something, you are legitimately multiplying it by itself, right? So I will have 1 minus cotangent x minus cotangent x, so basically minus 2 cotangent x plus cotangent squared x, okay? Now, here's the fun part. This is the part that you have that's not squared, right? That's the part that has to stay. Think about the last two problems that we did. It was the non-squared part that determined what it was going to be. So non-squared part. So that means I have to make this cosecant squared into a cotangent squared. Okay. Had I moved the cosecant over, I would have cosecant and I would have to replace my cotangent with cosecant. So again, you're going to get the same answer both ways. So it does not matter. All right, so we need to replace this cosecant squared with a cotangent so that we only have one factor, or one function, rather. So cosecant squared. Well, let's take a look. Ah, it's already technically by itself. Cosecant squared equals 1 plus cotangent. All right, so let's go ahead and replace it. 1 plus cotangent squared equals 1 minus 2 cotangent x plus cotangent squared x. So in order to factor this, I need to get everything to one side. All right. So let's go ahead and move everything to the right. So I'm going to subtract 1, and I'm going to subtract cotangent squared. It's 1 minus cotangent squared. 
Ah, interesting. Um, something is happening, and this does happen frequently with this type of problems. Things tend to cancel. So if I move everything to one side, what I end up with is basically negative 2 cotangent x equals 0, right? Because my cotangent squareds cancel and my 1s cancel. That does happen, and it's okay. So let's go ahead and keep solving it from there because, hooray, now I don't have to factor. Um, if you come to a problem where you will have to factor, just keep going. We've already learned how to do that. All right, so in order to solve this, I would divide both sides by negative 2. It's not going to change anything. Um, I'm going to get cotangent x is equal to 0. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and reciprocate it. Now, cotangent and tangent are kind of a special um, category when they reciprocate. Okay, so um, where cotangent equals 0, your tangent is undefined. That's just the way that works, um, because to get zero, it's basically zero divided by, let's say, a number. And if you reciprocate that, then it's an undefined statement. So what you're looking for is you're looking for tan x equaling undefined, or where is tan inverse undefined? Okay, and if you've gone and done your unit circle like you're supposed to, like when we were filling in the tangents by doing sine divided by cosine, right, your y divided by your x, um, the only where, only, ah, the only where, the only place that that's actually going to happen um, is at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 or 90 degrees and 270. Pi over 2 and then 270, sorry, and 3 pi over 2. Let's try that one again. So 90 or pi over 2 and 270 and 3 pi over 2. Okay, so yeah, that is one thing you need to make sure you put down in your notes. If you're having to do those kind of reciprocals um, where cotangent is 0, then the tangent is always going to be undefined. It's just the way that works. All right, if we need to do more examples in class, we can. Make sure you ask plenty of questions about it. Other than that, we are absolutely done solving.